You can't tell the story of the Gilded Age without thinking about or examining the Black elite. I did not know about the Black elite. I think that it speaks more to the erasure that happens in our history books. How they survived, how they sustained, and how they became successful, it's quite a story. There was a much larger African-American middle class after the Civil War than there would be later in the 20s and 30s in the Depression. It rather shrank. But at that time, they lived mainly in Brooklyn. We have this generation of men and women who are born without enslavement as a reality. And so as this new sort of generation of men and women come of age, communities of the Black elite develop. It was a moment of, of opportunity. There was this thriving community where Black people, Black families were accumulating wealth. They were starting their own businesses. There were newspapers, there were politicians, there were lawyers, there were scientists. People were like, we're going full throttle into <laughs> assuming uh, our rights and our freedoms. It wasn't like this kind of like, let's wait and see what happens kind of mentality. In many ways, the Scots help us understand a more complete and nuanced, complex idea of what the Gilded Age really was. With Arthur Scott is in the pharmacy business, which was an area that African Americans um, were particularly active in and successful. We must be pretty bad for you to choose to work two jobs and live like a servant when you can stay in your own home and work in a drugstore with you. Father, it's what I want to do. That's no. I owned a pharmacy, which I plan to pass down to you. His background was quite complex in that he was a slave, he was freed in emancipation, made his way up north, became a pharmacist, a strong member of the black elite. When we think about a Peggy, a young woman who is um, educated, she is representative of this new generation of black men and women who wrestle with ideas about injustice, who don't accept those ideas as unchangeable. Have you ever thought about writing anything political, Miss Scott? I have. Don't ask her if she's a Republican. Well, why should I align myself with either party when I don't have the right to vote? She runs into every kind of obstacle that you would face as someone who has the audacity to dream of being a writer. As a black woman in that time, you'd be like, well, this is the life that I want to live. Peggy belongs in Brooklyn. It's nice she has her job, but she will only live a half-life here. She likes the work. So there is more to life than work. And Peggy cannot live your life. The black world and the white world really rarely bumped up against each other. And then when it did, you had to be subservient. I wrote a scene where uh, Peggy was in the park meeting her father, and a white couple came upon them and just assumed that Peggy and her father would part so that they could just walk through them. Because the, the white couple wasn't going to move to the side. They weren't going to give way. And that's something that I experience even today. With the servants in the house, there is a great range of reaction, and certainly, uh, prejudice and fear uh, and anger and a desire to not have her in the house, a suspicion that she's coming after their job. I don't want trouble in the house. And while she may not want to cause it, she may be the cause of it. I repeat, it is not for us to have an opinion. Certainly not that one. That's all very well for you to say, but they're coming up here now to take our jobs. She's not taking anyone's job. I think it's vital to have the Scott family in this series, not just to move forward a narrative, but because it's true. These lives and these worlds existed, and that's why it resonates with people. Working with Erica, working with Danae, and Sonia, and Julian, and Sally, we went over those stories again and again, and really, we dug into the history of it. That's, uh, to me, probably the best place to start. I think it's quite inspiring and a wonderful way of understanding our collective history and not leaving African Americans out of that history. And I think it's a beautiful thing for people to know. If we don't show the story of black triumph, of black joy, alongside trials, tribulation, violence even, then we don't have a complete picture. 
It's a reminder that when we think about the nation's history, there's more than one story that needs to be told.